Well, welcome to <laughs> well, welcome to another jam packed episode. Um, hey, hey there, Kelly. How are you oh, doing? Good morning. That it's was a rocky start. Today. <laughs> mm, that was a rocky start. I feel like every time we do something good on one level, we're always gonna mess up on some some stuff that we were actually good at before. So we're talking about like you know holiday episodes, which will be coming up down the road. We're talking about some technical things that are advanced, you know, on our trying little podcast here but anyways something didn't really start very fresh but um i don't care i don't care i, mean, it's, I don't care it's totally on brand care. we are the difficult podcasters we have difficult mm. lives and the struggle is real because you know what life is difficult so for the record i don't want to be that way though <laughs> <laughs> no i mean I the, it's, it's like we don't try it just kind of is for all the people that like take pride in it and by the way kelly and i probably did this when we were younger too um, that team no sleep, oh, never not working. I want no parts. I want no parts. I want to be the head of something. And I tell, I delegate all these little tasks. You know, this is what I need. This is what I need. And I need you to do this. I, you know what I mean? I'm not in yeah. this. I am, I am, I am not fooled by this concept of like, you should always be working yourself, you know, to, to the bone, in my opinion. No, yeah. I mean, I'm, trying to get to that place but you know i completely started over with a whole new career so i feel like i'm back to that but trying to balance it out a bit but it's still not without its struggles but yeah. for this particular thing this is a labor <sighs> of love it's fun to get up and you know to put this show together and to hang out with you for the hour hour and a half that we're <laughs> chit chatting back and forth and giving all of our you know luscious opinions on anything and everything it always feels like it almost doesn't happen. It's like right up till the wire. Like, are we still doing this shit or not? Anyways, I thank I thank the people, all of you people who uh, watch and enjoy with us because, you know, we talk about just about everything. We've done this so long. Like I said before, we've uh, been podcasters before, like upwards towards 10 years ago, then upwards towards 20 years ago, we all worked in radio together. So. Yeah. I know Kelly, like I know the back of my hand, I suppose. <laughs> um, real quick, the first little thing we're going to talk about is not a pop culture moment, actually. Although yeah. this is a story, you know, I got to just sit here. I got to unloosen my bra. I got to <laughs> I gotta pour some red wine, some Pinot Noir, and just chill. Because I don't know what the heck is going to happen on this episode, Kelly. <laughs> but Kelly brought me this story. Can I, can I put it on you? Sure, yeah. I, I came across this very interesting um creator who went viral for her jewelry creations that she has a very interesting um element that she adds to her jewelry which is element her. you say element that's <laughs> element that's what we're saying so wait what sperm jewelry who knew apparently she dehydrates it grinds it up and massage it massages it into her clay creations Oh gosh, have we? And she's gone viral on TikTok, and she's got a you know a nice and healthy customer base for this stuff. I can't like I don't get it, but I mean, hey, whatever works, right? I just feel like now we don't have to do anything but worry about going viral. Remember back in the day, oh, if you were yeah. a singer, you had to be a good singer. If you were a dancer, <laughs> you had to you know study, you know learn all the techniques. Now the only thing that matters is go viral and everyone lets you do whatever. Now, I mean, this is not necessarily bad, but we're not used to having the sperm. Is it the sp it's the sperm? It was sperm. And then yeah, she yeah, dehydrates it, it, it? She dehydrates what? it. So it's, it's interesting. Her name is Amanda Booth. And she started out with these interesting bodily, I'd say, you know, elements and fluids and stuff and infusing them into her jewelry she started with like ashes from people that had passed away she's done breast milk and even some with hair and someone asked her actually it wasn't her idea someone a customer had asked her if she'd ever done it before so the idea intrigued her and she was like why not so she tried it with you know she used her husband first as while well, she was working out the kinks on how to do this she she, she, she takes a husband oh she, she, interesting you know she used her husband and how about uh, that? She, you know apparently dehydrates the liquid mm -hmm. <laughs> or the substance are you are you cringed out uh, with the substance in general are you want to 
Are you one of the I people? I don't know that I would want to. I mean, like, I didn't dig deep enough into it. So it's like, you know, you have your significant other, like, produce this, you know, and then you send it off to someone to be handled and, like, all that. I don't, I'm, I don't I feel know. Like, I feel like I don't have to be against this 100%. I'm, like, not, I'm not 100% against I'm it. I'm not wearing like, Danny yeah. DeVito's sperm. I would like Brad Pitt's sperm. You know what I mean? Like, is can it, you like, choose? Is it all custom or right? Or is it kind custom. of like a sperm bank thing where you can just pick somebody's? Or like, do, you mix, do, you... do you mix it like a batter? Yeah. Is it a little bit of everybody? <laughs> because I think, like, scientifically, won't these explode down the road? Like, this doesn't seem like... I, I mean, that, I guess once she dehydrates it and grinds it up like a powder, like, um, I guess Vice did a story on her, was one of the first people to do a story and, like, detailed out her entire process. So if you're interested in it, just look up that story because it's, uh, it's definitely intriguing. I no, mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Kelly, I'm not interested. I am not no. knocking anybody for their unique creations. I mean, get it, girl. That's, I mean, somebody gave you a challenge and you rose to the occasion. Funny yeah, but doesn't is. she seem a little bit weird? Let's take a look at this photo. If you're not listening to us oh. audibly, I mean, if you're watching, you'll see. I mean, just look at the stuff. It's just jizzling around. I don't know if jizzling <laughs> is a word, but it's jizzling around. <laughs> and, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, in the bedroom, sometimes it ends up on, you know, on, on, on the face or on the back or whatnot. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, it goes. I mean, now you can wear it and you can, you no. know, you can wear it without. Uh, no, I, I'm down with it being live in the moment and it being splattered. I'm okay with that. I can I can handle that. I'm a grown up. I can handle that. This is the heat of the moment. I don't want it taken away and, and dehydrated and blown dry. Like no. Mm -mm. I mean, who knows? You know, when you get into that one, you know, end all relationship, you might. Well, I, I guess know. there are people that do different things. Like they, what was it? The I mean, it's like the vials of blood that you wear. Yeah, like there's all kinds of things. It's just this is a very unique way to carry someone with you. <laughs> I know, but I think we got to be a little specific in terms of if it's um, you know, like because it's not all the same. You know, when it shoots out of the old system, like sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> like you, you know, sometimes you I'll look at I'll, right I'll now. look I'll, I'll look at my own. You know. And sometimes it's just lavish and rich and just creamy. And then other times, you know, I don't know what I'm eating or what's going on chemically, but you know, it like it like peters out. You wouldn't want that forever. You would want the good stuff. Yeah. So well, I just but I mean, but you're not because like I said, she's not she's manipulating it and putting it into like, you know, scientifically changing it into a substance that works for her for her jewelry. So it's going to be there's a process. So. What uh, I mean, you're a creator, so maybe that's why you're you're like cool with it. Maybe what yeah. ugly jewelry this is. What <laughs> ugly, ugly, ugly jewelry. It's just beads. It's like, what do you mean? Because the one necklace kind of looks like a sperm. Like, come on. But that's you know, it's, hey. <clears throat> you know, Kelly's to trying to say you're trying to say to each of their own, aren't you? I am because there, and that's what. And this is going to go into the rest of our show because there is enough space for everyone. You know what I'm saying? Like there's going to be all <laughs> these little pockets, all these little pockets for things that interest different people. And it's so funny how as a society, we all, we all do this. Everyone is guilty of it. You automatically are like, ugh, for things you don't understand. And when things are different, we collectively i feel as a society automatically it's wrong it that's not how it should be like it's it's just it, it's just how we've been conditioned to react to stuff and i'm guilty of it you're we just did it but it's like we have to backpedal and think about it and look at what we're talking about because it's not it's just different and being different doesn't always have to be wrong it's interesting and it might not be you know your thing but i mean hey it's I don't a... necessarily think that I have a problem with it in terms of her as the creator. No. I think I have a problem with it that it got blown out of the water because it was on TikTok. Like, I feel like anything, not anything, but a lot of things that get pushed out on TikTok are mm. so watered down. I guess this wouldn't be watered down, but they're so <laughs> watered down. So it's kind of like, you know. I, I mean, I guess I wouldn't know what to say. Like, is she in it for the long haul? What's the long haul? You know, like other things you said, she's, did, she's done ashes. She's done, you know, this. She might do other um, fluids, I suppose, or whatever you want to call it. So I, I'm cool with it. But it's like, you know, 
taking it to TikTok. Suddenly it's viral. Her whole life changes. I just don't know how I feel about TikTok being the reason. Like I'm not against this any kind more of more about your social media adversity. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's yeah, because I'm not I'm not again. You're 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 getting it. I'm mm -hmm. not against the artistic side, but mm -hmm. I'm more like, is she a full is it a fully thought out process or she was just like oh things aren't working let me just take to tiktok and do something extreme and <laughs> and and what do i always say tiktok being being asinine not that this is an asinine situation but it's a wild and unique situation it gets you it gets you so many um you know results so that's my only pushback on it but uh it's just i mean not for i me. saw a meme to, uh, this morning or last night when i was like scrolling around that was like um and it was a picture of Millie Vanilli, like with a scowl look on their face. And it's like Millie Vanilli when they see all these people getting famous on TikTok for lip syncing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, Kelly, of the two of us, is much more... She likes it. Um, I love doing our show. Anyways, we're two different people. That's why we host together and we do well. What about your communications? Begin of a social media or and or text message correspondence um mm. you were telling me and i actually was telling you a story which we will not bring up here but where the thumbs up had come up in a conversation and you were saying um people aren't really well what, what were you telling me about thumbs up well, means I had seen, fuck you basically well one of our uh one of our mutual friends who is a radio uh she hosts a radio show down in san diego we've known her forever her name is gina the latina she had done a tiktok where she had read a study that Gen Zers were against the um, the thumbs up, saying it was more for old people, that it was like people that didn't really get it. And it was funny because she went around her office and she was asking like the younger people kind of what they thought about it. And their answers were a little different from what the study had shown. And it just kind of like got into this whole thing because it's like, how do you feel about these? Like, how do you interpret these different emojis? Because sometimes if someone sends you a thumbs up, it's, cutting off the conversation so it could be construed as all right that's cool i'm done or mm. it could just be cool okay or it could you know it's funny how we interpret all these different things depending upon how the conversation is going but i think the consensus was you know most people were cool with it but a few of them did say that they felt like it was more older people that continued to use it i actually don't use it very much i've been using it with you like all week just to like fuck with you <laughs> <laughs> So we do now. <laughs> I yeah. don't really know. My way to say like fuck you, this conversation is over if I just like your last message. If you do what? <laughs> if I just like your last message. Oh, like you, you stop talking like, you, like you stop talking like to the person. No, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't have to be like a fuck you. It could just be like, okay, we don't have anywhere else to go with this. Yeah. Depending upon what the message is and how the conversation goes. I guess I don't get that bummed by it because in, <laughs> I, I don't want you to say, Yes, I agree with you, Ronnie, because it's gonna sound like I'm a pest in some ways. <laughs> but I feel like if I get a correspondence and it stops by way of a thumbs up or anything, if Ronnie, me if I get the notion to want to keep talking, <laughs> you know this, Kelly. I keep <laughs> yeah. going. Yeah. I will keep but going. But the thing when you are done, what's funny is that you do what I do, but you do it in a more, you do the love. Well, I'm new at that because I wasn't always an Android. Mm -hmm. And in Android, we didn't have that. So we actually right. had to be like, we had to do a three word sentence like, right. sounds okay. You know, <laughs> and now, I'm, the, you know, for me, the heart is mm -hmm. absolutely like, Got it. In fact, I've barely moved away from the heart to do some ha ha's or some exclamations, yeah. which I uh, think is great because it's a very nice way that you're basically saying, "Okay, I, we're good. Let's move. Let's let's move on yeah. with our day." You know what I'm saying? Like we do that a lot with each other, which is what I've noticed about how you end your conversations. Which I, you know, I totally <laughs> respect it, and, and yeah. I like I appreciate the sentimentality of it because it, I feel the way that I take it is very nice. That you're like, "Okay, good. We're good." Yeah. You know, well, I that's think I'm on the other hand, I'm a little bit more like unemotional and I'm just like, cool, like it, good, we're good. <laughs> well, I think it's because we know that we have to talk a lot for the show. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I don't want to feel like, damn, I'm imposing on her so much, but I need to get this opinion to her. We bounce yeah. it back and forth. And then I'm like, okay, no, go back to what you were doing, you know, and I, but you yeah. don't, you can't say it like that. So the thumbs up or, I mean, any of the, the <laughs> heart or the thumbs up. Uh, definitely works. I love mm -hmm. I love a copy of that. I love a copy of that. But you know, it is funny. 
I don't know if I could say it for the old. And first of all, who's giving a shit what the young kids think? That's the craziest part. I'll get to that in a second. But I will say that there was an episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City where this came up like three years ago. Where oh, the really? one, Yeah, it was the one girl. Her name was Heather. And she was like trying to talk to Lisa. Lisa was the type that didn't really like care if they were friends. Heather needed them to be friends. So when Heather would correspond... Lisa would give the thumbs up and Heather was like, yeah, that's basically like saying, fuck you. <laughs> so it can. And, and I and I was team Lisa on this, meaning mm -hmm. like, grow up, grow up. Like, if you do have a problem, just, you know, go talk to her. But mm -hmm. you can't be responsible for the other. Yeah, you can't be responsible for the other person not like giving like like, you know, um, giving you that that uh, uh, affirmation to be like, we're good. Like, you can't let a thumbs up be looked at as negative. However, I was in a text correspondence, and I'm going to be really light with the words here, but I was in a text correspondence, Kelly knows everything, where um, it was a text correspondence that was sort of out of the blue, and it was it was um, nicer on my end, I will say. I was, I was, the, I was the initiator uh, in, in a space that I would otherwise not initiate. So it's like, hey, blank, 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 which I know the person who received that message was like, what? Or, or probably excited because it's me, it's Ronnie. And <laughs> of course, they're absolutely excited. Yeah, I know this for, for sure. And instead of like, like, like a human <laughs> taking the correspondence and writing like, oh, good, I would love to go to lunch or something like that. Or, oh, nice to hear from you. Or answering the question that you asked. Like a human. Right. <laughs> um, the only thing I got was a thumbs up. So I tell Kelly and Kelly goes, oh, well, have I got a story for you? Gen Zers <laughs> hate it too. So I guess for the first time in the history of history, um, I'm with the Gen Zers that like, give me more than a thumbs up, you know? Because I was I was talking about let's get lunch right, right today. Mm -hmm. A thumbs up just tells me, you're you're good with it well then i'm not gonna like you got one message i can't i can't do all the work you know what i mean right. um <clears throat> but it's just so funny how do they even have these stats uh tabulated you know what, like, I, want, I, I wonder like how do you conduct those research thing like what what's the questionnaire say or like, what I'm do they curious. use right what, what, like if they're not using thumbs up what do they use how do they talk i mean it's not it's not they were talking about using like the one that's like this or how do you do it this, like this. okay i thought <laughs> like i the saw that kind of thing which is just awful <laughs> i thought i saw that a little bit but it was because it was through <clears throat> family and it was one of the cousins had um a, an older cousin who was in hawaii so i was like is that wow. like is like do yeah. they do it because it's hawaiian like not hawaiian but like, like the okay which i've done that one i feel like to me, I felt like that was a little nut because you're like, cool, okay, got it. Yeah, well, not only that, I think there's other contexts. I mean, I think all sign language should be, you know, really monitored these days because everything has a second meaning. Um, oh, no, but my totally. thing is, I could be like cussing somebody. No, out you probably that. we're gonna move on. We're gonna move. On. We're gonna move on. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like, what is wrong with using words? Like we're so into like, you know, abbreviating everything and like. It, I mean, Lazy. I get it. LOL makes sense because it's kind of saying, oh, I got to chuckle out of that or I'm not that serious. But all of these other ones, I mean, you know how many times I'm going to the Google? I'm right there typing in the Google because <laughs> I'm or I'm going to start bugging you. Kelly, what the heck happened? I'm going to oh, start I'm still bugging Googling you. some of the newer ones. I'm like, what? Yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> so I don't know. I don't I don't know if we'll ever get it correct. Or if I'll get we it We are correct. now like the older generation. Mm -hmm. Some bullshit. I was I was telling somebody the other day we're <laughs> we're like in the middle zone now. You know we're we're so far off from being like fresh out of high school and like what's our life's gonna be? But we're <laughs> definitely you know not you know Lord willing we're uh, you know you know we're not <clears throat> with grandkids and stuff of that nature. Like this is a really fun space to be. We had a whole episode de devoted to that last week. Um, you know, life in the forties. Uh, but I don't know. It's just so funny to, to, to connect and correspond with people when everyone has a different language, so to speak. I just right. wish people would use their words. There's other rules. Are you the type that fires off one long message or do you like do three words, five words, 10 words? Like, what do you do? And, and is there a, do you have a feeling about that? Personally, I get agitated Sometimes if I get 10 messages in a row and each one are like two words, it's like, why? <laughs> why? Hi, <laughs> yeah. how are you? Oh my God. Because <laughs> like, then my phone's just constantly going off and it's so annoying. Yeah. 
but it also depends on the per I feel that I've gotten more into it because also it depends on the level of attention span of the person you're talking to. Because there are people that if I write a whole paragraph with all the information in one, they will only read the first two lines. So I have to break it up to make sure they get all the information because they stop reading after like two sentences, which is annoying within itself, but that's how it happens. So I think it just depends what? on who you're talking to. Yeah. It's just like oh. with anything, if you write a press release, one, one thing I learned like as the press um, realm was changing was I would have to break up my press release and put like the main objective in two sentences at the top in order to get them to read the rest of it because people are lazy. It's the whole abbreviating thing. It's the instant gratification and like all of that. So when people are, you know, multitasking and going a hundred miles a minute, you, you need to break it up to keep their attention. So although it may irritate me, it actually serves me better. Like if I'm at, you know, if I'm at my, um, my, you know, if I'm creating stuff and making stuff and I'm in the middle of a project and somebody needs information from me, it's actually better to get it broken up because it will keep reminding me to go and look and answer those questions. I feel like it should be written based on how much information needs to be sent to you. So if I'm sending like Kelly and I will talk about our podcast, but we'll also we like I said, we worked in radio 20 years ago. So we have friends in radio or if we're talking about love life, <laughs> I just feel like every chunk should go together. That's mm -hmm. how I would do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I would want like a couple of words and another couple of words. Just give me the chunk that I got to read through later. But the notion to think that you can't. Like you can't do that because somebody might not have an attention span. I could almost see it on a, on a, as a publicist, um, like on a one sheet or a, or a deck or whatever, because there's a lot of lot to choose from. Mm -hmm. But I always thought that was the beauty of like putting together a really beautiful deck or a, or a, pre a press release. Cause I was always like, you know, it's like getting a resume. You look through it, you look at the whole thing, you skim through it and you, you get the bullet points that like, Oh, let me, let me ask about this or, Oh, okay, mm -hmm. we'll be interested in this because of that. But mm -hmm. you're saying, no, you got to just give all the meat and the potatoes right at the beginning. Ah, what is wrong it's with like, people? Why do I? And honestly, I found myself, I'm the same, like, God, I love my mother, but she will take an hour to tell a 30 second story. And I'm like, get to the point. <laughs> like, I'm the same. What, what is the, what, what are we talking about here? I don't need all that other stuff. Yes, all you do, that, Kelly. That, I don't need it. What do you, what are you telling me? You don't and think so? No, sometimes I'm like that because I'm a Sagittarius oh, through and through. And sometimes I can just be a bitch or I'm busy or like whatever. But like, to, like I find myself doing that and it's such a horrible trait. I will be the first to admit it. It's a <laughs> horrible thing. And I am trying my hardest to have, I have zero patience with anything. And I'm trying as I'm getting into this old decrepit stage of life, like to be better about it. But oh my gosh, because it's rude and it's not okay. And I fully take responsibility for that horrible part of my personality. But I'm just like, what what are you saying to me? Yeah, like, but let's, more let's people are probably more people are probably like you though. Um which is not okay. I, like, I, <laughs> I like it the other way. So I'm just thinking of an example recently. So somebody said, Oh, Rihanna performing at Super Bowl. Who else would be good to perform if not Rihanna? Who? Not mm -hmm. saying Rihanna was bad. And so I could have just said, I think blank. And I did not do that. I said, <laughs> well, you know, she probably wouldn't do it, but I would think it would be a fitting time because it's been a long enough duration since the fiasco. Now they should ask her and she definitely earns the title. And I think she would do a great show, but, and then I finally said, Janet Jackson. And I'm like, would oh be, my gosh. Who? Yeah, no, <laughs> no. And, and, and I can't stand it. The, I can't stand it the other way. I cannot stand it the other way. You just like it, it feels like you're not even talking as a human. What's the answer, <laughs> Jenna Jackson? It's like, but what? Oh, here we go. Let me let me let me let me figure out my point. It's because I want to know what made what made you derive that as your answer. Okay. You just giving me a flat answer is like, we're, I should have just texted this to you. I think Janet perform. <laughs> it's like lame. I want to hear what made you think that, you know, why you didn't pick Britney Spears, why you didn't pick such and such, you know, mm -hmm. I want to know it all. But I do that a lot. And people are always, you probably too, always like, Ronnie, just say the answer. And I'm like, I'm getting to it. I am telling a story. And, and I really love that about myself. You but guys, you I do. Are a you are a great <laughs> storyteller, which makes you 
so much better, in my opinion, at what you do and how you move things along than I am. Because I like, I mean, I can kind of, but I feel like you are so much stronger in it because you flow, you do tell a story and you lap it into the next thing and you're not trying to cut it off and hurry up and you're not worried about that sort of thing where I've become so conditioned to be on a time limit to like, hurry up, let's get to the point that it like I can chop stuff up. So yeah. I look to you a lot for that to try to slow myself down and to kind of relax and not be so quick to automatically like chop stuff up. So I, I do appreciate don't, that about you, but it does that. That's what makes you a great storyteller too. Don't get me wrong. There's times where I'm like, you know, we need to move <laughs> along. It's just, I, I will tell you one thing that is interesting is um, when Amazon became the thing or just, you know, anything really, you could order your food online, didn't mm -hmm. have to go to the bank. People were like, this is great. I hated it. I didn't like those conveniences and I don't like sitting in traffic either, but I don't like the conveniences that make you not a human. And I will tell you over the weekend, what did I do? I carved a jack-o'-lantern. Like I am just obsessed with the fact of doing things. Like I always tell you, I'll never be a cook per se, mm -hmm. um, but I would always make a great sous chef. I think we are so robotic. Like, oh, we never have to go to the grocery store because we could get it sent to the house. Oh, we never have to go to the bank because it's direct deposit. Like we don't do, we're not humans anymore. <laughs> I love being a human. It's my favorite thing. So that's maybe where well, a little my, bit of... my last probably two years in LA, I don't think I ever stepped foot in a grocery store. Oh, and that's one of my favorite things to do, <laughs> Kelly. But now I live so far out of like the city that I have to go to the grocery store all the time, which is, I mean, which is fine. So when I'm like on my way to um, our store, or, like whatever, then, you know, we kind of like plan it out that way. But it's so funny because I got so used to having everything done. I mean, I never went shopping. I used to use all those like personal stylist things that have clothes sent to me. Like I didn't do anything but work. I love that hustle too. I like I like that hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just giving you a little bit of where it maybe no, comes but from. I totally like I totally get it because now I'm back in to where I like to do those things. I like to be out in the world and you know kind of seeing new things for myself and you know being able to like touch things and pick things and you know all of that so yeah i mean like yeah, i said i, I, I carved a jack-o-lantern <laughs> awesome. I, I, I didn't i didn't have no reason to um you know it's, i don't have like I nieces mean, and nephews but i carved a jack-o-lantern it didn't come out that good and we i had see some, pictures now i i will i had some red wine and i was the snoop snoop red wine which i wasn't really like i'm not a snoop fan that's not why i got it but i heard it was really good and it is very tasty oh, and like nice. i had a beautiful saturday night Drinking red wine in my robe and cutting uh, a well pumpkin turned jack o' lantern. I thought Love it was it. so great. Yeah, we'll do one more social media thing, but I know we have to move along. We got some great stories we're going to talk about, uh, mm -hmm. including Taylor Swift and Olivia Wilde and some differences of opinions and judgments. But I want to do one last thing with you because we're in the vein of, you know, like we said, what does the thumbs up really mean? Does it mean the good old fuck you? Is it a middle <laughs> finger? Really? You know, we're trying to figure these things out because everyone has different correspondence with their social media or their texting. Okay. Do you think I'm right or do you think you're right? So while we were preparing for the show, Kelly had to send me some like, like uh, some clips, not clips, but <laughs> links to interviews. Now, I was always an Android person, so judge me all you want, but a lot of people have really been saying Android's really the way to go. Like, lately, like, nobody is loving... Oh, you, oh you're still on the iPhone. Oh, wow. Do you feel okay? Um, and I got my first ever iPhone, this, you know, this, this go around, and it's fine, but there's a lot of things that I miss with the Android. But with that being said, with the Android, I just got so used to... If I was sending Kelly something, like, let's say, pick a, pick a topic, pick a celebrity. Who do you love? Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris. And I have to send Kelly four articles that I found, you know, online. I'm I'm going to compo compose an email and I'm going to send them all to her. Because I was an Android user, I didn't get to use the AirDrop or whatever. And it never bothered me. And I also thought about it like this. It's so much easier for when she wants to go look at it. It's all curated neatly. Now, Kelly, the other day, was was <laughs> iPhoning me to, 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 the, to the end of the earth. With like, oh, we could talk about this and we could use this and we could talk about this. We could use this. And I says, and I was trying to like word it. So I did a voice message. Kel Kelly, my dear, um, you don't have to do this. But at the same time, would you mind putting them all Basically, in one? you have to do this. 
<laughs> no. But I had asked her, I said, could you put them all together? And she was like shocked. <laughs> I'll let you take it away. She was like, well, no, I was like, she's I like, what? Could. Air check it, dummy. Or air, uh, what's it called? Air, <laughs> airdrop it. So am well, I right I, or are you right? Well, I think it's, I, professionally, I can admit you are right. Because it, it is better <laughs> to put everything together. And as a professional publicist, you know, I do that all the time. And that is the better way to go. Everything's in one place. You can go and find it as we're discussing stuff. Now, the, the greatest thing about Ronnie and I is that we will put something together like within hours of we're going to sit here and do this. So I'm on my phone. We're talking about it. And I'm sending him as we're discussing because it's like top of mind for me. So I don't want to forget. And with the million things going on, because that sometimes I'll just get sidetracked. So I was just kind of doing it as we were talking. More so for him to kind of look to get an idea of what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about it in the sense that it's going to, you know, it's a pain in the ass to go back and forward it and do all of that stuff because I just didn't think about it. But I <laughs> absolutely see your point. But at the same time, you can open it, airdrop it to your laptop because that's where you're going to put it anyway. And you might be doing it <laughs> so naturally. People are yeah. probably doing that with you where they're sending you stuff and they're in the mm -hmm. text correspondence. So you just, when you go, when, when you need it, the next time you need it, mm -hmm. you, Kelly, you probably just go get it, airdrop it, don't think nothing. But well, because, because when I, you go to the contact of the person, like anything that you've ever sent me in on links or like whatever, all I have to do is click your name and it shows me every photo you've sent me, every link that you sent me and every screenshot. And I just have to open that. I don't have to scroll back through your text. See, so, I think you do, do or I thought you did. I because yeah, I'm a yeah. droid droid right. user uh before. And shut up with the droid. Uh, <laughs> no, I've had a droid too. I've gone like back it's and a forth. cracker jack uh, economic, like cheap <laughs> phone. Like, are you like a droid still no, costs money? Yeah, and it no, takes a great picture. Pretty, yeah. Anyway. Um, I just think my mind doesn't like to cross things over very much. It likes to mm -hmm. be like close it off here and then open it up here. And yeah. sometimes all of these conveniences for me is just like wow, everything's just jumping at me and it's doing it automatic and uh, my direct deposits coming at me and like i got groceries coming to me I was that's like, just like my laziness of skipping that step because if i'm doing it on my phone and not on my laptop then i have to like go to the message i have to copy it i have to open a note i have to paste it i feel like it's it's i have to do three or four steps in order mm. to be able to compile it for you to share it for you it's because i can't like i can't just flip screens the way you can on your laptop i mean you can but it's not as yeah. easy you, so, you can't be it and, and, and you said it, which right. was which something is, I got, I got used to easier yeah. ways to do it. And I just don't know yet, but yeah. it's, you know, the way that the, the long way about it. So I do apologize for throwing all that stuff at you, <laughs> no, I'm, because, I'm, I'm, no, but like professionally, you're right. It should kind of like be concise and, you know, presented. And it's just, I was just being lazy. like, I'll, like, I'll say this if <laughs> like, I don't mind it in a text if it's like, we're just talking, but when it's like pertinent to, I have to go mm -hmm. back and find it. Like one time mm -hmm. I asked a friend to help me with something and he, like he didn't email it to me and it was like in the text message one day. Cause he's, he's kind of like a good friend, but also really grumpy. And I was like, Oh, I can't ask him again, but I, I really wish I could. Cause I don't know where in the text it was, but see now I didn't know what you said mm -hmm. that if you press the person's name, you could just see all of the links that were sent. Cause I mm -hmm. needed to refine that link. I was like, what did he say? That was you very can valuable. Also search it through your messages and it'll bring, yeah. it'll bring that up. But yeah, it's a, uh, it, if you just open the contact, let's see if I can, Show you a lot a, li a live see. demonstration come, well come maybe we can do it on tiktok and i can like do the record screen and then show you come but, on difficult um... podcasters low you know <laughs> stepping it up with the technology on, okay so you know how you have um hold on now it's not taking me to the screen because okay so no don't accidentally okay, so send me your nudes here's, don't like, yeah. here's our text right like oh, all the stuff cover we the screen about. how dare you how <laughs> dare you we how about? do this this woman <laughs> this woman but, but it's like so i'm showing him different stuff but it's like if i click your name then it goes here and then i can see everything you sent me or everything oh you sent gosh each other. you could see how obnoxious i've been <laughs> <laughs> It's all about me. I don't ask Kelly a single question. Oh, I this, know. this episode but, has yeah, worn like, me out. That's what it is. So you could see all that. And wait, now I'm showing. So it didn't show your phone number anywhere. So we don't have to worry about that. You, you might get a full edit out of this whole segment. <laughs> <laughs> Look at from this point on, there's the one shot. It's just me. <laughs> no, um, we do have to move along, though. This is great. But social media, text correspondence, it's just such an interesting thing. And there's so many ways mm -hmm. to do it. So we we wanted to have a little fun with that again. Whether you say thumbs up, F mm -hmm. you, 
or you have an Android and you rock it out, or you have an iPhone and mm-hmm. you airdrop everything. It is all good. Uh, or if these- you get a green message back, is that a deal breaker for you when you're dating someone? If their texts aren't blue, are you going to break know, up? Yeah, well, we'll save that. We'll, we'll, we'll save that because there's other things that are, um, you know, deal breakers. And I've mm-hmm. heard that for years as a droid user. Oh, you're a droid user. I'm like, do you know how much this costs? This phone is still expensive. You dummy. Um, <laughs> see, I'd be fighting with people. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's how I do with the online dating. Once you come at me with the phone, I'm like, shut up. Um, but I have an iPhone now, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, Kelly, do you want to switch gears? We have a little bit of time here. Um, well, we have a little, we have more than a little to talk about Taylor Swift. Um, this was a re-release you were telling me. No, her new, this is a new album. So this one, her album Midnight, she's got four different cover versions of it. And she dropped um, a few different versions. So it's a, it's a lot of songs. And her theme of this album is all about revenge. So she's, you know, really spilling some tea. And I mean, she always does. But in this one, particularly, she's kind of going back after people that have kind of, you know, done her dirty and kind of airing some stuff. So, you know, some Taylor Swift fans are saying that, you know, one of her songs, basically, she admits to outing Scooter, Scooter Braun's affair and telling his mm. wife. And um, I mean, I'm like, hey, you know, that's how she expresses herself. They really did her dirty and you know, good for her for being like, you know what? Who do you think did it? I did it. <laughs> oh, dang. And it's just, you know, it's just kind of like that. And that's like the theme of the album. And, mm. you know, Taylor Swift fans, they're, you know, they are very, they're very protective of her. And, you know, I think there was a, it was a New York Times critic that kind of gave it a bad review saying, you know, it, it really wasn't anything, you know, great. And, you know, people were kind of coming at it, but you know, she's a, she's a great lyricist. She tells a story and I was never really like not a fan or a fan, but you know, I got interested after all that Jake Gyllenhaal drama. So I listened more carefully mm-hmm. to the words of her songs and, you know, she really is a great storyteller and she has some very powerful lyrics and she just talks about her life. Mm. And I think, you know, I respect her for all the hard work that she does and she puts out some great stuff. She knows what her fans like. She gives them that. And, you know, the whole thing with with Scooter and her music rights and buying her catalog and all of that to to the point where now she's re-recording all of those old songs in order to own, you know, to own those masters. That takes a lot of money, a lot of work and a lot of guts to stand up and do that. So, you know, kudos to her. Um, oh, real quick, Kelly, you may mm-hmm. want to pull your headphones open a little because it sounds like they're rubbing on each oh. other a little. Possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I might just be my hair. <laughs> or yeah, yeah, I might just be hearing Taylor Swift's music in, in in my in my in my mind. Um, so essentially, was she saying that she had a, like a bad deal at the beginning? Is kind of what it is, and through that, she had to re-record certain music so well, she could have he, rights to it. He bought her masters from her original record label, and then basically either had the price too high or wouldn't sell them to her. I have to go back and kind of you know kind of re read what the true story was about it but they had a falling out where he was kind of like holding them hostage so to speak okay where he just didn't want to let her have them and is he still making millions off of it is he still um the manager of justin bieber also i mean does he still um i wonder i I wonder i I mean he's still you know a lot of his clients like have still stuck with him so i don't yeah i don't really like know that and how about that another cheating scandal like it's just yeah apparently he had a thing with one of the a real housewife of something oh i should know this you should know this yes (laughs) go look it up right now no um who could it be um i'm so intrigued now no i mean it's it was all um, of those articles i sent you i think I mean, <laughs> oh gosh, this show is just falling apart. Um, but yeah, so he cheated, um, and and so she's she's given him his medicine back. Um, she yeah, also has true, a little yeah. bit of a uh, a TikTok challenge or a YouTube short challenge, so maybe we'll do that. I don't know, um, but that's pretty cool for her to kind of you know take her power back in some ways. Yeah, um, I, I guess is I what you're getting so. at. Yeah, I mean, she's gotten a lot of flack over the years for basically just doing what you know male musicians do and she's you know gotten a lot of shit for it for her dating life for just what do you mean though exactly doing what men do what what part well because it's like 
if you're a rock star and you're dating a lot of women and you're a male and that's kind of your thing, you are praised for it. Guys are like high-fiving you and people are like, oh, that's so great. But as a female talking about your dating history and your dating life and, you know, making it, I guess, putting it all out there and having different, you know, actually dating is kind of frowned upon. And it's just a double standard that's been around till, you know, forever. It's, you know, happening. It happens to, you know, a lot of women in the industry. And a lot of people that are kind of tearing you down for it are other women, which is unfortunate mm, you about You said it. that, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, you look at all the different, you know, the different cheating scandals and all that. And depending upon how you think about it, I mean, when the whole Brad Angelina thing like blew up, a lot of people were blaming Jen. They were, you know, when he when he cheated on her with Angelina, it was like, oh, well, you didn't want to have a baby. You didn't want to do this. And he wanted a family. So that's why he did that to you. And it's a lot of women saying that. And she put up with a lot of stuff. I mean, it's been going on forever. And it just, like, sucks. Why we let like, people yeah. with, with who, who don't have credentials to have an opinion <laughs> speak is, is crazy. Uh, but you're right. People will really jump into this and kind of make, um, what do you call it, uh, opinions that really aren't um the same across the board you know mm -hmm. you want to keep the same energy um you know in an immature that we're looking at it's like he's cool because he's got a flock of women around him mm -hmm. and then shame on her because she has a flock of men around her you know and mm -hmm. these are just things that have been these are things that have been um you know burnt in into your <laughs> into your mind as a very as a very young child you know that this is kind of the guy's just going to be a guy and and the woman right. has to kind of also um navigate differently when we watched hulu's difficult people it was great because there was that episode where billy was like talking to arthur about like when you shame her you're shaming women you're shaming mm -hmm. you know gay men and i mean you're, the reason he was saying that is because you're just shaming things that you depict as uh, uh, shouldn't be Mm -hmm. And you're now suddenly saying, you know, because she is doing that, because in that storyline, it was Julie, you know, having a lot of fun um, with with anyways, the whole storyline. Um, and it is that thing that like, I mean, she I was being know. a little promiscuous. She had gone through a trauma and that's how she chose to deal with it. Yeah. And it's just something that happened in her life. It was like something she was actively like acting out. And she was getting a little bit of shame for it, but it does shine a spotlight on that. It's like, why? What yeah. does that have to do with you? How did I, I was, that hurt you? I don't want to jump in and overshadow the, the story here of Taylor mm -hmm. Swift, but I want to jump in with like kind of a similar thing. Um, it, like, so I had been watching, well, I watched Bros and I'd watched um, also American Horror Story, New York City, the, the newest one. Oh, yeah. And, and um, like I feel and I was watching it with family and I believe there was a little like, wow, this is like risque or whatever. And all I wanted to say is, yeah, the, in, in the American Horse, American Horse Story, New York City, it is. It's a lot of gay guys getting it on. Yes, that's like like living it up, owning it. But like it just is always gets looked at so differently. I'm like, but yeah, we watch every other show about mm -hmm. American Pie was the same thing. But American Pie didn't move the needle at all in terms of uncomfortability. It was right. like, oh, those are just boys being boys. And and um, what is the word? Objectifying, you know, um, the mm -hmm. Shannon Elizabeth character. So I sometimes do feel that. And again, I can't feel it from the woman perspective. Again, we have this little... Uh, image mm. here he's cool shame on her you know as a gay guy i'm like <laughs> I, I want my own image but it's that thing where i'm like i always feel like i have to protect it in a t in terms of like how people react like oh bros why did they have to have you know these scenes with like you know three or four guys and why it's like you mean the scenes that we see on every other movie but like when it's men it's like suddenly a different thing when it's women it's suddenly a different thing so to that i say i can agree with what you're saying even though it's so different. Well, because it's it's just the double standards all the way around, depending upon where it's being focused and what where the target is. Because aside from just like the dating and sexual aspect of it, there's also, you know, as a woman, if you are, you know, standing up for yourself or you are combative in any way, then you're just a bitch or you're emotional or you're whatever. But if it's a male, then, you know, he's just being strong and he's taking charge and he's, you know, whatever. It's, just a very different outlook and you know when you're in kind of like a corporate setting or any professional setting there's always going to be that it's always you know a lot of a lot of the excuse sometimes is like oh is it that time of the month for you and it's 
such, is that being said? Like, oh, yes. that's nasty. I, yeah. Yes. Like yeah. I have, I've heard that I've experienced that. And it's like, you know, fuck <clears throat> you. yeah. Like, well, and the, and the flip side is like, sometimes you as the woman, I mean, I'm guessing here, you're trying mm-hmm. to get your job done. People aren't really listening all the time. You know what I mean? People no, don't necessarily yeah. take things seriously. So what I know from your career is you've had to kind of step up and say, I need this shit done and I need it done now. Mm-hmm. You know, had it went another way where you get the respect in the position that you're at and people do what they're supposed to, Kelly doesn't ever have to go to that place. Right. Yeah. If you just did your job, it would never have to go beyond that ever. But yeah. then it turns around to be, you know, my fault for being like too hard or too that. Why? Because I want you to do the job you were hired to do. That makes me the bad guy. And it kind of goes along with like some of the things that she talks about in her songs. I mean, one of, you know, Taylor Swift songs specifically talks about that. And it's like, if I was a man and it's from an older album, but it, you know, she like puts those references together and it's very true. And, you know, Olivia Wilde is kind of going through that right now. She's dating a younger guy and she's getting a ton of shit for it where, you know, the nannies now come out talking shit. Yeah. All the stuff about her movie that got overshadowed with all of that drama. It's just so many different things that are a double standard and just take away from the objective. And that's why I, and when people don't understand our dynamic as hosts and longtime <laughs> friends, and I do it with lots of people, you know, it's like, and, and you don't need my validation by any means, but I'm always like affirming and like, that's right, Kelly, you go get busy. You do what you want to do. <laughs> if Kelly ends up getting married, that's fine too. Like any lane you take, I'm supportive of it because yeah. I couldn't be, that would be hypocritical if I say, oh, Kelly, by the way, on the weekend, boy, if you knew what I did and I give her all the nasty stories and then it's like suddenly I would judge her because like, oh, Kelly, woman, therefore she needs to be more pure. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you just need to be smart, you know, mentally healthy for what you get into. Mm-hmm. And we should be able to like support. And but a, a lot of people don't do that. You know, the relationship between a gay guy and, a, and it was one of his longtime female friends is a little bit more supportive. Unfortunately, straight men really hold that on you know it's like your sister and your mother need to be you know pure as can be but like you will objectify women all day every day i mean it's built into the culture it's built into going to football games and there's cheerleaders you know like it's and they don't really realize it and i'm not trying to proclaim anything bad about the way straight men do things but it is something to open your mind to um well i'm glad taylor swift has new music that's exciting i did see a Mm -hmm. lot of chatter online i've never really listened to it too too much so i will uh Go back and check it out. Um, switching gears or adding to what you were saying a bit ago, you're talking mm-hmm. about Olivia Wilde. So what is the main issue that's going on here? Because it feels like, you know, this was a lot of press <laughs> going I mean, into the movie. it's never ending for this poor woman. <laughs> like, I mean, at the end of the day, whatever truly happened within her relationship with Jason Sudeikis and how it ended and why it ended and all that is at the end of the day, it's no one's business. And now the nanny wants to get into the mix and she is apparently sharing these text messages that she says she received from Jason where he felt like he was blindsided about the end of their relationship. And the whole salad dressing thing is so ridiculous to me. But apparently she had like a special salad dressing she would make for their Mm -hmm. family and he got upset because she was taking it over to Harry Styles. And it just became such a ridiculous thing to where even... Olivia kind of jumped in and, and she uh, shared an excerpt from a book about salad dressing and was mm. like ultimately like sharing her salad dressing recipe. But then uh, now Grey Poupon is getting in on it and they're trying to capitalize on all this drama because that was one of the ingredients in the recipe. So they have these limited edition bottles. <laughs> Don't worry, Jean, a play off of her movie. Don't worry, darling. And it's just insane. I don't, I don't mind if they maximize it, but it is a little too much, you know, like you, you got to let these, these are real people, you these know, and I understand, people. I do understand, you know, you could have an opinion, take it to Twitter, have your opinion. But the reality is they are real people. I always think about it as when you judge as harsh as you do, try to remember there's kids involved a lot of times, you yeah. know, and like, what, what is that like? You know, would that be a situation? Sure. You, you, your parents are successful and you have, you know, bigger bigger you know access to a lot of things in school and stuff like that but you still don't want to see the nonsense with your parents you know splashed all over every magazine i just don't think it's you know particularly healthy so why yeah so why jump into it and Um, what does age have to do with anything guys date younger women all the time 
cl- like all the oh, time. Well, There's onset what, romances all the time between what directors. What makes you break it down? It, it was in some articles too and comments that people are leaving. It's like, you know, she has no business like dating this younger guy and all, all this and that. But it's the same thing that men get praised for. Again, I mean, there's directors that have had affairs with younger leading ladies on their on their sets and weren't dragged through as much as she is being right now. I think one of the most, one of the biggest ones was when Kristen Stewart had that affair with her Snow White and the Huntsman director. And a lot of people blame, put all the blame on her. Mm. And it was all, it was mostly targeted to her and not really putting a lot of that on him. As and far a lot as of it might be stories. A, a lot of it might even be a bias that people don't even realize. Like they just totally they don't they don't actually acknowledge like, oh, wow, I am being a little harsher than I would have had mm-hmm. it been the guy just because these are what has, these are the things that have been fed to us in terms of what's acceptable and not acceptable. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I'm not going to contradict what you're saying, but mm-hmm. I actually haven't seen as many stories about Olivia Wilde. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and sort of the, these negative comments, I'm just saying, I have not seen them. I'm yeah. not uh, disagreeing with you, but it, it, it hasn't come to the point where I was like, oh my, you know, mm-hmm. I've seen that too, Kelly versus you saying, oh, this is what's happening. And then we looked into it and I was like, oh, wow. It kind of sucks for her. So right, maybe- she just did, you know, she just gave a speech at the, um, 29th annual L women in, um, Hollywood, um, gala that they had in LA. And, you know, she, you know, she talked about how women need to stick together and, you know, don't need to fall into the pressures of, you know, what's happening around because the more that we support each other, like the, you know, the harder it will be to, you know, for all of this to divide us. And, you know, she kind of made a joke that people were actually giving her shit for too. She said, you know, you're not really a woman in Hollywood until you want to be like medic into, you know, put into a medically induced coma until your press tour is over. And oh. <laughs> she was just kind of making light of all of the mm-hmm. drama that's been kind of happening to her. And it, a variety wrote a story about it. And I was just kind of reading people's reaction and comments to it. And it's just, it's very harsh and it, people are looking at it one-sided. And I wonder too, if people are looking at Jason Sudeikis as Ted Lasso and thinking that he's one in the same and they're feeling sorry for him based upon that character and not really knowing because nobody knows the real story, right? Like nobody really knows. We're n- nobody's involved in it, but the two of them, and you just got to believe what they decide to say. But that is if another you're looking thing. at it. But if you're looking at it from their character points of view, I wonder if that's where a lot of the harshness comes from because everybody's in love with that show, and he's you know such an endearing character. And if they're confused between that and the real person, and being a little bit extra harsh because of that. I don't know why they're so into that show. I tried to watch it. Oh, you, know, you don't like I, it? I love it. I know I'm not a... What is so special? I'll say it like this. What is so special about it? Like, what is so so good? Like, I don't understand what's so good. Like, So good about it. it is is the hmm. good. Is that he comes in, he's that made he fun feels of... Quirky, and, and then he, he feels no, emotional in the it's, middle? It's the good. It's about pushing the good out to overcome the shit. People are mistreating him, making fun of him and all that. And he perseveres at it by still being a good person. And in turn, it brings out the good and all the people being hmm. shitty that are so used to being shitty. That's the what makes it special. But are they being shitty or they just come from a different culture and speak differently, the, like more abrasive versus he's the out of town or he's the one visiting? Maybe his little... But it's, the way that you, but it's the way that you react to people, right? It, again, it goes with because somebody's different, you treat them like shit because you think it's No, stupid. no, I'm just no, saying... No, but I, don't, I mean, like, that's how, that's how it kind of goes. So yeah. he's different. They treat him like he's stupid and he doesn't know anything. And they're, well, it's like a lot of the characters are me. Yeah, I mean, well, you'll have to watch it and he, decide for yourself. He, no, I've watched a little and I'm just like... Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I guess. No, and, and probably it's the classic case of um, it's it was overexposed and overhyped that I went totally. to go look at it. I was like, what is, I can't <laughs> even locate what the story is, you know? And and I also get really turned off by the will. Hey, hey, hey my name is Ted Lazo. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Like, I'm just like, what? Give me an emotion. I need emotion. And then but I remember there, watching there it. there is a lot of that in there. Well, I know there's the moments there. where he, like, was there and he had just broken up with his wife on the show. So, anyways, mm-hmm. it's not about Ted Lasso, but it is about, <laughs> you're, you're right, maybe they're, like, love the show. This was one of the bigger Emmy Award winning shows two mm-hmm. seasons ago. So, people just, like, say it's one and the same. It's like, no, it's Jason Sudeikis. I mean, it could be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I actually had, um, I have a mutual friend with the two of them. And I was like randomly at this like Memorial Day like backyard party where they were both there, super mm. nice with their kids, and 
you know, like very nice people. I've, you know, been around the two of them a lot. They owned a restaurant together in LA and um, I even worked and did a party for Booksmart when that came out at South by Southwest and, you know, they were both there and, but you never know what's, you know, what's going on in people's relationships and to pick it apart in such a way is, you know, I guess it comes with the territory of being a famous person, but, you know, at the end of the day, just being so harsh on, you know, females for the double standard of what society depicts as such is just an unfortunate thing. And I hope one day that we can kind of get away from that and just not always be so harsh to one another. Yeah. I want us to go back to being funny on Twitter. You could still be <laughs> celebrity uh, culture, pop culture, you know, obsessed or whatever. But like, if your funny thing is you're always shitting on somebody, that's just like in general, like, you know, I think we do a good job at that. Yeah. The show is called difficult podcasters, but we wouldn't hurt a fly. I think we keep it pretty good. We actually purposely um, select to keep certain stories off of our show because we don't want to go to certain things that just don't make sense for what we do. Um, mm -hmm. Do you agree? Do you agree with what? Well, I'm yeah, saying? and the difficultness is more about all the challenges we face just to get here and the difficulties that we <laughs> well, face yes. in life. Yeah. It's not really about picking apart other people. It's having, but it's okay to have a difference of opinion. But once you're being judgmental and just being ugly, that's where the line I feel gets crossed a little too easily. Right. We could polarizingly be on the other sides of opinions. Like I told you, I have not seen a lot of Olivia Wilde hate like you have, but mm -hmm. that's just me saying I haven't seen it. I'm open to like Kelly saying, no, look at this article. And she's texting me these articles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry. But, you know, instead of <laughs> compiling them in an email, like I require. No. Um, but it is, it's that thing where we, we, we do a really good job. Uh, we don't want to, as, as it's been said, this is not the teardown show. It's difficult mm -hmm. because we're difficult. And it's also yeah. relatable because, you know, you, like you said, you were at a party, you, you know, for this event and that event, we've worked in the business, you know, so we've seen mm -hmm. some stuff and, you know, you think of it for yourself too. Like, you know, who's to say our podcast doesn't become the biggest thing since sliced bread. And it's like, oh, we have to suddenly be like, well, we could just shit on Ronnie every day. Like, no, I do have feelings, though, too. And if I make a misstep, that's a different thing. But mm -hmm. like, you know, people are just getting a little too cocky online with the Twitter and the Reddit and the opinions. Well, it's like, really easy to hide behind a keyboard. And it has been since the dawn of social media, especially that it's everybody's voice has become more heightened because there are now so many platforms to yeah. share these opinions, which is can be a good and a bad mm. thing. And it's just, you know, kind of how we choose to take them, but they also can be very damaging. And I think one of the things that I like about what we do here is like taking responsibility for your shortcomings and also praising each other for the good things that come too. Right. I mean, there are a lot of crazy things about, you know, my personality that I feel I can, I can work on. And I look back on life. And as I've said a million times, like being reflective at this stage in life and wishing I had looked at situations different and not been so emotional in reactions and kind of, you know, done better than I did in a lot of situations. And that's just kind of what I want to focus on moving forward. And it's still a challenge. Every day is a challenge. I mean, I didn't want to compile those damn links in an email. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, but well, you're, you're at still times thriving. you got to think about you're, other you know, you you're think thriving, about others. Kelly. You can't be selfish. You are. <laughs> um, any last thoughts on anything here? Other than that, I think we're ready to wrap out. Trying to get yeah. our episodes under an hour now and keep it mm -hmm. moving and give you more and more. Did you have any comments on the show? Um, I just let's be more supportive of each other. Go check out Taylor Swift's new music. See what you think about it. You know, don't worry, darling. I thought it was a great movie. You know, don't don't judge it before you watch it. And, you know, let us know what you kind of think in the comments. And I'm really curious to see how people what people think about the whole thumbs up social media reactions and all that. Too. Oh. Do you think it's an insult or not? <laughs> and super quick, <laughs> we got to let you know about Viridian Row. Creativity yes. never goes out of style. They are our sponsor. They, you know, you don't have to get the... Uh, Items we were talking about in terms of jewelry from them. You could go to viridianroad.com and get other really, really great stuff. My Patreon is patreon.com slash randomly Ronnie Jr. Um, go to difficultpodcasters.com. And I think this has been a great episode. It is time to wrap it up, Kelly. It is time for me to say goodbye to you. We'll talk on the next one. Bye.